Hey, what do you know? The replacement octal sockets have arrived. Yeah, they're new production. They don't quite have the same look or feel as old production sockets. Well, with ceramic, um, there's a variety of ones still being made, basically, for uh, the audio enthusiasts. But I went with these in particular because the lead spacing appears to be identical to the original, and they're the same type of leads. So I'm pretty sure these will all plop right in there. Uh, sorry, plop right into the original holes. And notice they removed one of the leads, so I'll have to just cut it out of this. And likewise, this is meant for chassis mounting, which I thought was kind of odd because it's chassis mount, but it's also got circuit board leads on it. So, I don't know, but I'll just pry this off because I have no use for it. And since I got uh, a few, I ordered a few sockets, I'll just go ahead and replace both of these. It was very easy to get the old socket out. I used my small diagonal nippers and went into each tube socket pin and crushed it. I'll uh, demonstrate it on this other one, but what I wanted to show you now was that it's so close to just plopping right in, but the lead spacing is slightly larger on the board. In other words, the diameter is a little bit larger, so I'm going to have to bend the pins out just a little bit but otherwise it is a perfect fit and to get that one pin out that was super easy all I had to do was squeeze it and it just went right out through the other side in other words they put the pins in through the top and then twist them down below to hold them in place so I just had to straighten it out and it slid right out through that slot so I'm going to take each pin and bend it to the out, uh, outside, like that way, and then bend it straight back up a little bit. I just need like an, another millimeter or two on each pin. There we go, just had to bend each pin slightly. Now, here is how I got them out. So, diagonal cutters, wear some eye protection because bits of plastic will go flying, this stuff is brittle. Just go down into each socket pin and snip. Alright, that was busted apart pretty well. And now, on the other side, so it's the socket right here, you heat up the pin, and they just fall out the other side, because they aren't bent over. No stress to the board. I'm going to figure out the orientation to make sure I get the new one in there correctly, and uh, remove the right pin, and we're in business. I went down to my storage space and came back with a box full of bits and pieces I'd scavenged out of a similar uh, chassis. I think it was a 10L43, but I noticed some subtle differences, uh, aside from it looking filthy. Uh, for example, the transformer, this one is flat on top, and this one has a bump out, but the part number is the same. Well, go figure. Um... So, for example, this has a cracked core. I think I could scavenge that one. Also, I did manage to salvage the linearity control out of it. This one's not in the greatest shape. The wires are kind of coming undone on one end, but if it's got continuity, it should serve for now, at least. I also have another debutante set. I did a video a while ago on predict a salvage, and I had one that's just a mess. It's missing a lot of bits and pieces. Well, on that one, when I looked at the chassis, somebody had already replaced linearity control with a gigantic rheostat, like an inch and a half, two inches in diameter. So that's, I don't think that's worth messing with. So here is that control. 
And I think the schematic is an error because I show it having a 180 ohm stop, which to me should mean that you can't get below 180 ohms resistance. But the way they show this wired, yeah, if you <laughs> rotate the control all the way to one extreme, you'd be putting that you'd directly to ground. So either you don't need the 180 ohm stop or the schematic is drawn wrong. At any rate, it's a 1.5k pot. Um, and even that, I don't think the value is all critical about a 5k pot. I think that would work fine too. We'd just, you'd be, the setting would be all kind of scrunched at one end. Um, not sure the exact wattage, I can look that up. So it's a wire wound control, which means there must be a fair amount of current. So that goes directly to the cathode uh, on the vertical output triode of the 6DR7. Oh. Oh, the part list doesn't specify it. I don't know. I don't know how to guesstimate the way the wattage on these. 2 watt, 3 watt, 5 watt, something like that. Finally, that is pretty much it. I even replaced that stake that had been broken off. I scavenged one from my spare board. The only thing I haven't replaced right now, resistor-wise, is 1.8K 2 watt. <laughs> and all my stash of parts, uh, I don't have one. I only have uh, a couple of 1 watters. Um, but I think I'll uh, build something up for now. I mean, it, it measures okay. It just seems like a shame to replace everything else but that one. <laughs> Uh, if I had a couple 3.6s, I could put them in parallel, I could put a couple, uh, well, like an 8K, 8, 8, 820 ohm and a 1K in series, maybe 1.82K, I think that'd be close enough, that's probably what I'll do. And of course all the caps have been replaced, all the new K networks are in place. The thing I'm not happy with is some of these ceramic caps are grungy looking, they have some kind of waxy coating on them, and I've tried... Lacquer thinner, denatured alcohol, uh, simple green, nothing seems to really get it off other than heat and melting it off. Uh, but I don't want to mess with it anymore, really. And I did not replace all of the tube sockets. The, the two that seemed, well, aside from the two octals, I replaced this guy and this, because they seemed to be a bit stressed. Oh, and, and sorry, and this one. But the other three look to be... Uh, in pretty decent shape. Um, so I'm thinking I'll leave them alone. Especially this one because it's got the nice telescoping shield. I don't have any replacements that are quite like that. Oh, and I scavenged a dual selenium out of uh, that spare board. It doesn't work out well if the horizontal hold doesn't lock very well. I'll put a uh, modern shocky diode replacement in there, but I'm curious to see how that goes. Alright, so basically, that board is done. So, what else is left? Um, well, one, I wanted to answer a few of your comments, or address a few of your comments. Somebody had asked about the, uh, there were a few comments about the plating on the chassis. Uh, it is cadmium plated mild steel, as far as I know. Some of it cleaned up better than some, some areas. Uh, you see how it's super shiny here. This is where I don't uh, test with a number of different cleaners, including jewelry cleaner, CLR, Spray 9, which is sim similar to uh, Simple Green, but it's a lot more uh, caustic. Uh, and I went over here again with some of the jewelry cleaner, um, but I decided it just was not worth the effort. And overall, I did not soak this or treat this as heavily as I did the tuner. Because I did not want to do an excessive amount of cleaning with the transformers here and, and, and the flyback and whatnot. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. So, the cadmium, yes, over time, um, exposing it to air, it gets a little pale from oxidizing. And if there's any sulfur present, it gets a little bit yellowy. And it's, it's fine. It's there to prevent the steel from corroding. So by cleaning this, you're actually wearing some of the protective layer away, and it'll promote more corrosion. So I leave well enough alone. So another comment was about the wiring. 
theoretically, yes, I could replace all of the wiring. Um, I don't think I will for several reasons. One, uh, it'll take a long time. Two, uh, wire is not cheap. I do have some, but I think I'd use up a, quite a bit of my stash going through all the various colors to, uh, um, to clean all this. Uh, and third is some of this wire is heavier gauge, like for the filament supply. And I think all of the wire I've got, let's see, it's all 22 gauge. But basically, I've got a few spools of this. I got an assortment of 50 foot spools I've been using over the years. There's probably 20 or 30 feet left on each spool. If I rewired this whole thing, I would really drain my supply. And I'd rather not. Most of it's in fine condition. Yeah, it's a little, the colors have faded, but the wire is, is perfectly fine. Um, something else about, uh, speaking of wiring, so when, when it comes time to put this board back in, I need to reconnect all those wires. Originally they used some type of wire wrapping tool or machine, I'm sure. And this is fairly heavy gauge wire. It's at least 22, possibly even 20. Uh, and it went, oop, excuse me, it went over these stakes. When I put these back on, I do not wrap the wires back on. That's um, it's very tedious. The wires tend to break because they're kind of brittle. And I do not have the tool for this gauge. And again, I'd have to straighten out the wire, put it in the tool, and they would twist around again and they would just snap off. So what I do is I solder them on. But a tip about that is these do not take solder too well. I think these are tin plated, and over the years they've oxidized, and it's a little bit of work to get them to tin. Now these are tin because these were bent over and soldered to the stake on the board, but these are not. So take some fine sandpaper, like 400 grit, 600 grit, emery paper, that type of thing, and sand them down. And then when I go to put the wire on, Especially when I first want to power this up to make sure it works. I am just going to take the tip of the wire I'll clip off the the spiral bit. I'll take a little tip of it. I'll tin it and I'll just tack them on Once I know that this is working I'll do them more securely just on the chance I have to take the board out again. I don't see any point in really Spending a lot of time securing all those wires if I just got to pop the board out Now this is not my first time doing this on at least one occasion, I had to take the board back out. I think two occasions. One, as memory serves, is because I hadn't replaced the tube sockets and there were some fractures in one of them. Uh, and the other occasion is I had made my own replica cup plates and I'd made a mistake in one of them. And I had to rewire it a bit. Oh, and I think it was a th another occasion. It might have been that same board. I had uh, a cold solder joint or an unsoldered joint. So I, uh, now I do one component at a time. I clip out the old component, put the new one in, solder it in place. But there was a time when I would do a bunch at a time. And when I flipped it over, I missed soldering one of the wires on, one of the component leads. So I'd take the board back out to redo that one. I did not do that on this board. I'm pretty sure everything is soldered, so I won't have uh, that happen again. Well, as far as these new sockets go, I'm not crazy about them. Uh, because the tubes are a little hard to get in and out. You've got to put some force on that. And it kind of stresses the board. Now, I don't anticipate having to take tubes in and out a whole lot. But when I come to get it out, yeah. there we go. But otherwise, eh, and for what I paid, they were, they were like three, three and a half bucks a piece. I certainly didn't need ceramic, it was overkill. Uh, but I just wanted to get something quickly. Um, now that I've got a little more leisure, I know I'll be doing more of these in the future. I'm going to look around and see if I can get some new old stock ones that uh, will fit onto the circuit board. Alright, so we need to put this back in here. Some of these wires are going to be taken out because they're no longer needed because I relocated the caps and some of the wires will need to get replaced especially these wires originally there was a big filter cap here and these are the clipped off lugs 
So we've got a wire that goes over to here, and then I use it as a tie point, and then ran a wire on. That's gone now, so I'm going to replace this and just run a single wire. Or I could leave them like there and wrap them in electrical tape. I that's kind of ugly looking. As far as mixing some plastic and cloth wiring, they've already done that. There's some plastic wiring down over here. So it's already a mix, and that's, that's a factory original. And then there's this board, which I will take out and clean up. Uh, there's only three wires going, or four wires going to it. It's power, AGC, that's the uh, video and audio out, and then the coax for tuner in. And there's a few stakes and this lifts right out, and then I'll clean up underneath there. Uh, flyback is in pretty good shape. I reflowed some of the wax around it. There are some gaps where some has flaked off, especially on the bottom. I do not have any Corona dope right now, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Eventually, when I do get some, I will pull this out again and uh, and recoat it more thoroughly. And I won't have to replace it down here and. Then there's the big challenge. This is the big challenge. I've got it on facing backwards right now, but this is a CRT housing, obviously. I need to break this down. I've already taken the front cover off so I could clean it. I need to take the back cover off because the wiring on this is absolutely miserable especially the yoke wiring. It's got to be replaced. In order to get at it, um, really I want to take this back cover off because I want to clean it anyways. Yeah, I, I could probably get it all off through the small opening on the back, but I just seem to take this all apart and I can clean off the arms and, and such. I cleaned this off <laughs> a bit when I first got it. This is the color it's supposed to be. This is the color it is after cleaning. It's a little bit lighter here where I've gone over it more. So I want to take disassemble this, give this a simple green bath. Same with the control arms. And I can see that the CRT too is pretty grungy. I cleaned off the glass surface, but like up here it's still got a nice layer. So I want to break this sucker completely down and rewire it. These arms are steel that's some sort of brass plating. They're almost always in miserable condition. I think it was a really thin plating. Sometimes I even think, oh wow, is that just filth? I thought that was all corrosion on there. Wow, now I'm really curious. Could this be shiny metal underneath <laughs> a really thick layer of disgustingness? Well, that'll be an interesting experiment. I know this plating, though, is extremely thin to the point where you kind of can't even polish it. You use something like brass, though, anything that's a little bit abrasive, and you're going to go right through it. Same on this. In fact, you can see this is already... I went through this when I was cleaning it. It's like a microscopic layer of coat of color. Which sometimes makes me think that some of this is not brass plating, it's tinted lacquer which is what I'm considering to do to uh, replace it. But for now, and then I'm kind of on the fence about what to do with this set. Yes, I could completely strip it down and repaint everything. But given its history and all that, I kind of don't want to. I want to leave it a little bit grungy, like not repaint this, at least not now. I want it to show some battle scars. It's the, I want to leave the, burn, the, CR, the CRT with the burned in line on it. I'm not trying for perfection, and, and notice this, I don't know if that's a molding flaw or what, but there's a kind of a weird bump out in the plastic here. Yeah, it could be sanded down, and then it'd probably be a different color, and I'd have to repaint, or paint the whole thing to blend in and all that, you know, it's like, I've already got, if you want a pristine example, I've got this one over here. No, it's not a siesta, but, in other words, there are pristine examples of this set around. For a collector who wants one that's in really, really good shape. I mean, look at the plating on that. 
This is one of the best I've seen, but even on this, the arms have that characteristic kind of pitting on them. Which leads me to another topic I'm only going to touch on very briefly here. I get asked all the time, what do I do with these sets? I'll do a video blog and I'll go on and on about it. I keep some, I sell most. Almost everything you've seen me work on for the last four or five years has belonged to somebody else and they paid me to restore it. Before that, most of the sets you saw me restore, I ended up selling. I have very few functioning sets in my collection right now. I do not intend to have a personal museum or a large collection or anything like that. The sets that I intend to keep are the sets that were interesting, challenging, or just piqued my interest. Like, I'll keep this one. Because I wouldn't be able to sell it for much anyways, not with the condition it's in. A serious collector would want a pristine example, <laughs> which is not this. I'm not going to go to the ridiculous lengths to make it pristine, which would involve replacing most of it. That's just silly. I don't care if the set's beat up. I don't care if it doesn't work perfectly. If somebody wants to see a predicta, I can say, hey, look at this cool predicta, and I could show them a before picture and show them what it looks like now and say, you know, we'll think it's cool. That's that. I'll keep a few others that I, I think are really interesting. Interesting from a history point of view and from a design point of view, like this very early Sears silver tongue with push button tuning. Uh, Dumont Clifton, a few others. But I do intend to sell most of the TVs you've ever seen me show on all my videos over the years. Alright, so how does one go about dismantling a Predicta CRT head? Well, I've shown this in previous videos. Uh, originally there was a plastic cover on the front and a metal band around the the perimeter that hooks up to a spring down here. I find it extremely difficult to unhook the springs down here, so I pry my fingers underneath the band and pry it off the front. So that's how the front cover came off. To get the arms off, there's a bolt on either end. Let's see if I can find the right size sockets. Maybe it's five sixteenths. There you go, five sixteenths. So we take those off, and then that arm will come out. A little twist. So there's that. There's a screw in there. And then you give the arm a little bit of a turn and it comes out. It has some pins on the end. It's a closer look at the condition of it. Now I guess these are just press fit on. I had not realized that until I saw another set recently where this was coming apart. Well, originally, yeah, it would have been gleaming like that. I've seen some guys get these replated and they look amazing. But it's not easy to find metal replaters, especially not ones you can send metal to them in this condition because they're going to have to clean that up. So, well, I'll do what I can. Let's get the other one. Even if I did find somebody, I mean, I, there are there are platers around, but. It would not be cheap. I'd certainly not be able to recoup my loss if I ever was to sell a set that had been replated. No, this sh back should come off. Oh wait, no, no, no. I think there are two little screws in the front. Yes.
especially curious because the CRT has been replaced. Curious to see how good a job they did. From what I can see, they did a pretty good job. I mean, it, it's seated in there properly. There aren't any screws missing or anything. They didn't hack anything up that I can see. That's that. That's one of the reasons I want to get it out is so I can clean it thoroughly, thoroughly. Now you can see the business end of all this stuff. So there's the picture tube, it's held in by the steel band. So all this plastic and all that, that's all purely decorative. This is what holds everything together securely to the base. And that's tightened up by a, a bolt on either side, tightened down to fit snugly to the CRT. This black stuff, it's a conductive coating, it needs to be grounded securely with the spring. There's the yoke. There's the high voltage connector. Yeah, they didn't use a cup or anything, it's just clipped in there. There's some paper down here, I guess, to uh, prevent chafing. So I want to replace all this crap. High voltage wire, no, that's right, it's crusty too. Or, well, hmm, yeah, <laughs> there, I just, I just destroyed the insulation by bending the wire, so it's got to go. Um, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I think the CRT wiring I can reuse. This seems to be in pretty okay con condition other than being a bit dirty. And the cloth, the yoke wiring, maybe. But again, this plastic stuff, it's just trashed. I'm not sure what to use though. Um, the plastic PVC wiring I've got, well, hmm. the plastic PVC wiring I've got is solid core. This all should really be stranded because of the flexing it gets when you move the CRT head. The stranded stuff I've got is PVC and then it's cloth covered, which adds a lot to the diameter of it. Probably not enough to be an issue just on these two wires here. But I could also take off the cloth. But the other issue is what is the voltage rating on this wire? The two horizontal yoke wires are different than the others. They must have done that for a reason. I'm guessing it's because it has uh, more voltage on it. Well, the stuff I've got, it's rated for 600, the plastic, and then they add cloth over it, which should add a little more insulation. Is that enough? I don't know. Um, otherwise, I've got to order some, which means waiting. Uh, but I will uh, just hop online a little bit and see if I can get some. There's, there's, always, there's always stuff I need to buy anyway, so I don't mind beefing up the order with some other things I'm, uh, I need. And get some wire that's rated for oh I don't know like 2,000 volts. Up here at the yoke it's really flexible. It's in really nice condition. Down here it's trashed. I'm guessing it must have been the heat. Uh, <laughs> that wire is just toast. I do have high voltage wire though, so that's not an issue. Potentially I could use a high voltage wire I've got for the yoke winding, but again it's really thick stuff. And I do salvage wire out of things I've scrapped out. It's possibly. I'll, I'll look through my stash and see what I can dig up. After a couple rounds of simple green and scrubbing, it's pretty clear now that a lot of this is pitting and rust. I could use metal polish, but again, that's going to strip off what's left of any type of brass colored plating. Or I could use navel jelly, which is messy. I could just leave them. But what I'm going to try is Evapo Rust, which is a non acid based rust stripper pH neutral, you can dump it down with grain, biodegradable. It's kind of like, well it looks like molasses does. You may have seen molasses being used as a rust remover. Same idea, it's kind of like using sugar water. Uh, and it actually works quite well. 
takes maybe a little bit longer than navel jelly, but none of the acid, and uh, it's really easy to use. So I'm just going to, I got them in this plastic tub here, I'm going to soak them for a couple hours and uh, rinse them off and see how it goes. While I let the arms soak, I gave the CRT housing a healthy spray of Simple Green. I let it sit for a while and then go over with a scrub brush. Well, unfortunately, as is typically the case with these, after sitting in the bath for a while, I had to use some abrasion to get the rust pits out just using a plastic scrub brush or a uh, pot scrubber um, sponge wasn't doing it so I used the brass wire brush which wore off what was left of the very thin plating you know I'd speculated that maybe it was uh, tinted lacquer coating but now I'm pretty sure it's just really thin brass plating all right well on the plus side it's actually the pitting was was pretty minor I've, I've got some that are much worse so all in all, it's a pretty nice shape, and I could leave it like this, it would start to corrode because it's just mild steel. I could clear coat it with lacquer, it'd look okay. Or as I said, I could get it commercially plated, I got a bunch of these sets to do. Um, so uh, rather than spending what I imagine would be hundreds of dollars, I'd like to do it myself. Now I've done a little Caswell plating kit, which is like a brush. You hook up to a 6-volt power supply, and it comes with some brass plating solution, and you chemically do it. I've read up on how to do it on a larger scale with, um, like, fish tanks and chemicals, and I don't want to go through all that. I'm going to go to th and buy all that equipment and chemicals and spend all that time cleaning up the metal. I might as well just have a commercial place do it. But there's a third option, which I'm sure some of you know about which is to do with heat and friction and brass brush like this uh, the idea being you use a torch um, on something this small propane would do or for something larger maybe oxyacetylene you heat it up and you rub aggressively with a pure brass brush or a buffing wheel like attached to an electric drill or an angle grinder or a Dremel tool and it will actually transfer melt a thin layer of brass onto the steel there's plenty of YouTube videos showing it pretty simple process on just tubular steel like this I could get away even doing it manually with just a propane tank and a brush like this it would take a while but it can certainly be done so that's what I'm going to try doing I do have a Dremel tool that came with an assortment of, of bits that might have a brass, brass <laughs> buffing wheel, brass wire buffing wheel with it. Um, otherwise, I, the downside is I don't have any of the stuff I need. I don't have a propane torch. or uh, I mean, Ages ago I did, even if I still have the, uh, the nozzle end and the bit that screws onto the tank and all that, it's so old I wouldn't trust it anyway. So basically I need to get a whole propane rig, which isn't going to be too expensive, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. And uh, I got to make sure that it is pure brass wire. Apparently a lot of these buffing wheels and brushes, it's brass plated steel. Got to be pr pure brass. Um, so I took a gamble and I ordered some that will fit into a rotary drill. They have quarter inch shanks on them uh, from China. It's going to take a few weeks for them to get here. Meanwhile, if I can dig up one with my Dremel tool or maybe buy one for a few bucks locally for a Dremel tool, I'll give that a try or just buy a pure brass wire brush just to do some experimenting and I'll get a propane tank. Uh, with all the quarantine situation and stay-at-home orders and all that, that have now have been extended through the end of April. I don't know when all that's going to happen, but I just wanted to let you know that is my game plan, is to try brass plating these with the heat and brass wire brush method. If any of you have any tips or have tried it, got any feedback or thoughts, please let me know.
I looked through all my salvage and scavenge bits of wires from over the years. I found some high voltage wire anode caps, but no voltage, or sorry, no wire rated for a few thousand volts. But what I also found was I forgot I had some spare Predicta bits and pieces. So I've got a couple spare CRT sockets wiring harnesses, plugs, if these are in any better connection or condition than the ones I'm using I could use them. Although these might be for 21 inch sets. And then there's this which is a whole yoke assembly with plug and everything. Um, unfortunately this is also for a 21 inch set. You can see they're a little bit different. However, it does have those two types of wire I'm looking for, this black and this red one, and they're very flexible and in good condition. Um, I would rather not hack it out of this, but it's certainly an option. I think these plugs are the same. Uh, yes. Yes, they sure do appear to be the same. So, I could probably take this and cut it off near the end there, and transplant it to this. I hate doing stuff like that, because you never know, next week I may end up with a 21 inch set that needs this part. <laughs> so I will continue to look for wire, but that is plan B if I have to. I'm going to end this installment with a few odds and ends. I did cobble together a 1.8K resistor. I also sprayed, sprayed some fader lube into these two potentiometers and verified that they both work. So I think this board is ready to go. Again, I'll leave off on this board until I test the functionality again. I dug up some 47 type light bulbs, so I'll install one in a tuner so we can get that lighting up again, as it should. Maybe do a little rust removal on that. Be nice to see that channel selector illuminated. Uh, I'm still looking for some wire. And um, I think it's time to install this board and start wiring it back up and cleaning up and replacing the, the chewed up wires as needed. And finally, oh, what's this? Another predictive board. Oh, a mystery project that's been in the works for a while. More on that when this project is done. <laughs>